Adikavaye Muyantiya Surayaha Tene Brahmav Daya Adikavaye Mu Jantija Surayaha Tejo Varim Ridam Yatabi Nimayo Yatra Tri Sargo Mesha Tejo Varim Ridam Yatabi Nimayo Yatra Tri Sargo Mesha Damna Swena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Swena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of us. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality of Godhead. O all-pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the universes. creation, sustenance, destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into As illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on the fire, land seen in water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to three modes of nature. Appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravocha. Dharma Purujita Kaitavutra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayom Lulanam Shivadam Tapa Trayom Lulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parer Ishwaraha Kimva Parer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Kriti bhi susu subis takshana. Kriti bhi susu subis takshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in their heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of Such all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. He is sufficient in itself for realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established in, within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Sangitam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Sangitam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam. Mohor Aho Rasika Bhuvibhavuka. Mohor Aho Rasika Bhuvibhavuka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shishukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam 
Shravantam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Radiantak Stohi Abhadrani Radiantak Stohi Abhadrani Vidu Nati Suhit Satam Vidu Nati Surin Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures Or to hear about him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita Is itself righteous activity it is self righteous activity and for one who hears about krishna and for one who hears about krishna Lord krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart Lord krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart acts as a best wishing friend acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him and purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him Nasta preesu abhadresu Nasta preesu abhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his Trans dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service. He becomes, becomes fixed in the devotional service, service of the Lord. Lord. <coughs> Become fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Yeah. Tada Rajas Tamo Bhavo. Tada Rajas Kama loba dayas chaye. Kama loba dayas chaye. Chaita itara navidam. Chaita itara navidam. Sitvam sattve prasidati. Sitvam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice become Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of Krishna perfectly. And understands the, the science, science of, of God Krishna. perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvakarmani. Drusta evat manishwari. Drusta evat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth. Personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanta 1, chapter 16, verse number 20. Padanunam suchasi maika padam. Padanunam suchati maika padam. Atmanam va. Vasalir Bhokshyamanam Anmanam Vasalir Bhusamanam Aho Suradin Rita Yagya Bhagam Aho Suradin Rita Yagya Bhagam Praja Uta Swin Mahavat Yavarsati Praja Uta Swin Mahavat Yavarsati Translation by Srila Prabhupada I have lost my three legs and am now standing on only on one only. Are you lamenting for my state of existence? Or are you in great anxiety because henceforth, henceforward, the unlawful meat eaters will exploit you? Or are you in a sorry plight because the demigods are now bereft of their share of sacrificial offerings because no sacrifices are being performed at present? Or are you grieving for living beings because of their sufferings due to famine and drought? Purport by His Divine Grace, 
A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. With the progress of the age of Kali, four things particularly, namely the duration of life, mercy, the power of recollection, and moral or religious principles will gradually diminish. Since Dharma, or the principles of religion, would be lost in the proportion of three out of four, the symbolic bull was standing on one leg only. When three-fourths of the population of the whole world become irreligious, the situation is converted into hell for the animals. In the age of Kali, in the age of Kali, God, godless civilizations would create so many so-called religious societies in which the person of Godhead will be directly or indirectly defied. And thus, faithless societies of men will make the world uninhabitable for the saner section of people. There are gradations of human beings in terms of proportionate faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The first class faithful men are the Vaishnavas and the Brahmanas. Then the Chatriyas, then the Vaishyas, then the Sudras, then the Malachas, the Yavanas, and at last the Chandalas. Chandalas. The degradation of the human instinct begins from the Malachas, and its Chandala state of life is the last word in human degradation. All the above terms mentioned in the Vedic literatures are never meant for any particular community or birth. They are different qualifications of human beings in general. There is no question of birthright or community. One can acquire the respective qualifications by one's own efforts, and thus the son of a Vaishnava can become a Malacha or the son of a Chandala can become more than a Brahmana, all in terms of their association and intimate relation with the Supreme Lord. The meat eaters are generally called malechas, but all meat eaters are not malechas. Those who accept meat in terms of scriptural injunctions are not malechas, but those who accept meat without restriction are called malechas. Beef is forbidden in the scriptures and the bulls and cows are offered special protection by followers of the Vedas. But in this age of Kali, people will exploit the body of the bull and the cow as they like, and thus they will invite sufferings of various types. The people of this age will not perform any sacrifice. The Malachi population will care very little for performances of sacrifices, and although Populate, uh, and although performance of sacrifice is essential for persons who are materially engaged in sense enjoyment. <coughs> in the Bhagavad Gita, performance of sacrifice is strongly recommended. Bhagavad Gita 3.14 to 16. The living beings are created by the creator, Brahma. And just to maintain the created living being progressively towards the path back to Godhead, the system of performing sacrifice is also created by him. The system is that the living beings live on the produce of grains and vegetables, and by eating such food stuff, they get vital power of the body in the shape of blood and semen. And from blood and semen, one living being is able to create other living beings. But the production of grains, grass, etc., becomes possible by rain, and this rain is made to shower properly by performance of recommended sacrifices. Such sacrifices are directed by the rites of the Vedas, uh, namely, <coughs> Sama, Yaja, Rig, and Atharva. In the Manu Samhita, it is recommended by, that by offerings of sacrifice on the altar of the fire, the sun god is pleased. When the sun god is pleased, he properly collects water from the sea, and thus sufficient clouds collect on the horizon and rains fall. After sufficient rains fall, there is sufficient production of grains for men and all animals, and thus there is energy in the living being for progressive activity. The Malechas, however, make plans to install slaughterhouses for killing the bulls and cows along with other animals, thinking that they will prosper by increasing the number of factories 
and live on animal food without caring for performance of sacrifices and production of grains. But they must know that even for the animals, they must produce grass for the animals, and they require sufficient rains. Therefore, they have to depend ultimately on the mercy of the demigods like the sun god, Indra and Chandra. And thus, and such demigods must be satisfied by performance of sac performances of sacrifice. This material world is a sort of prison house, as we have several times mentioned. The demigods are the servants of the Lord who see to the proper upkeep of the prison house. These demigods want to see that the rebel living beings who want to survive faithlessly are gradually turned towards the supreme power of the Lord. Therefore, the system of offering sacrifices recommended in the scriptures. The materialist men, materialistic men want to work hard and enjoy fruit of results for sense enjoyment. Thus, they are committing many types of sins at every step of life. Those, however, who are considering engaged who, who are consciously engaged in the devotional service of the Lord are transcendental to all varieties of sin and virtue. Their activities are free from the contamination of the three modes of material nature. For the devotees, there is no need for performance of prescribed sacrifices because the very life of the devotee is a symbol of sacrifice. But the persons who are engaged in fruit of activities for sense enjoyment must perform the prescribed sacrifices because that is the only means to get free from the reactions of all sins committed by fruit of workers. Sacrifice is the means for counteracting such accumulated sins. The demigods are pleased when such sacrifices are performed just as prison officers are, sa are satisfied when the prisoners are turned into obedient subjects. Lord Chaitanya, however, has recommended only one yagya or sacrifice called the Sankirtana Yagya, the chanting of Hare Krishna in which everyone can take part. Thus, both devotees and fruit of workers can derive equal benefit from the performances of Sankirtana Yagya. Itai Gauru Premanandi Yaribo, Srila Prabhupada Ki So there are four things that evolve uh, prominently in uh, Kali Yuga. That is the lessening of the duration of life, mercy, the power of recollection, in other words, memory, and moral or religious principles. They will all gradually diminish in this age. So that's a serious thing because there's so much advertisement now. You know, you take this new herbal supplement and it'll improve your brain activity. Right. Or uh, you uh, do this and you'll live longer or you take this miraculous herb. One, one person called me up once and said, hey, are you ready for the next new uh, product? I said, well, what is that? He said, it is uh, a product that eliminates diabetes, it eliminates cancer, it eliminates high blood pressure, it eliminates cardiac problems, it eliminates everything. I said, wow, that's great, but what is it? Oh, it's wonderful, it's, it's like something that you just take one pill a week and you become younger and you become smarter and you become stronger and you will this thing and that thing. I said, okay, but what is it? He said, it's, it's the, the, new, the new product. You know, you have to get in on the ground level before everybody else gets into it. I said, that's great. What is it exactly? He said, it's just wonderful. It's, it's all natural. I said, okay, but what is it? He said, oh, it comes from China. I said, okay, uh, but what is it exactly? Well, he said, don't worry. You know, the Chinese are really up to this now. You know, they're really doing a great job. 
and this is the next new thing. You got to get in on the ground level. I said, okay, I'm going to get in on the ground level. Just tell me what it is. He said, well, it's an uh, extract. Okay, what kind of extract is it? Well, it's an extract from a natural source. I said, okay, what is the natural source? Well, it's a, it's, it's a special rat. I said, rat? He said, yeah, but it is, it's really wonderful. It works great. I said, okay, but w w what's so special about a rat? He said, no, no, it's not just any rat. It's a rat that lives on a 6,000-foot uh, uh, mountain. I said, well, we got rats here, too. He said, no, it's not the same thing, probably. Don't, don't make jokes. Now, this is serious. I said, okay, but what's so special about the rat? Well, it grows at 6,000 feet. I said, well, look, we got Mount Rainier. You can drive a car up to 7,000 feet for free. And I can take some rats from downtown and put them up there. I said, he said, look, don't act like an idiot. I said, well, <laughs> look, what's so special about it? Uh, by the way, where does the rat ext uh, you know, extract come from? It's just from the rat stool. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to sell me a rat stool extract from China? I said, look, you're making jokes now. This is serious. This is the next new product in America. <laughs> you see? <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you, you know, associate with idiots, you know. Uh, now, it's not only that. Another time, I had a friend of mine, Indian Punjabi boy, and he got a job in a bank. So I started going to that bank, you know, he was a teller. And then after a little while, I didn't see him as a teller, you know. Uh, and I called him up and said, what, I don't see you anymore. I said, no, no, I'm... I'm in the back office now. I got promoted. Oh, I said, really? What do you do now? I said, well, now I take care of loans. Oh, I said, that's good. Uh, well, I, I wish you a lot of success. Now, wait a minute. He said, I want to talk to you. I said, what is it? Look, you got a company, don't you? I said, yeah, I got a company. He said, we should do, we should do an IP offering. I said, what? An IP offering. We can become millionaires overnight. I said, wait a minute, I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, first of all, what's an IP offering? You know what it is, right? Uh, initial, what is it, stock? Public yeah, initial public offering of stock in a company. I said, but how can you make money by uh, an IP offering? He said, look, it's happening every day. Uh, I said, oh, okay, but I mean, what is it exactly you're saying? He said, so look, we, do, we, we, we make an IP offering, we sell stocks in your company, and overnight, you become a millionaire. I said, but uh, you know, usually you, know, you have to have a product. He said, don't worry about the product. Product doesn't count here. This is different. So he tried to convince me to uh, basically cheat the public. Right? So I said, no, I can't do that. He said, no, you're missing the boat, Prabhu. Everybody's doing this. They're all becoming millionaires overnight. I said, I'm not going to do that. You know, I don't believe in that. That's, that's cheating. You're, you're cheating these people that buy it, the product. So I didn't do that. Then there was another man who in, in Vancouver, he had some stock or, or I think he, he had some kind of a gold mine. You know, He was always talking about his gold mine. But one day he called me up. He said, probably you got a company, don't you? I said, yeah, I have a company. You know, I make some products. He said, good. We should do a uh, IP. I said, what? Are you talking about an initial public offering of stock? He said, yeah. He said, we can we can do that with your company. I said, I don't want to do that. That's cheating. He says, not cheating. He said, it's intelligent. <laughs> I said, this is what's going on in this country. You know, and and people do not feel any remorse in cheating the public they just all also crazy to make money overnight you know so anyway this is the what happens in the progress of Kali Yuga there is hypocrisy there's quarreling there's fighting there's greed there's lust there's anger and uh, Prabhupada says since Dharma or the principles of religion would be lost in a proportion of three out of four so you have, uh, you have mercy, you have cleanliness, you have truthfulness, and you have austerity. So 
Mercy and cleanliness and austerity are lost in Kali Yuga. Don't even look for them. They don't exist anymore. And uh, there's just a little bit of truthfulness left. And, and that is also disappearing because this is the age of hypocrisy where people are lying and arguing that they're not lying. So uh, the symbolic bull was standing on only one leg. So Prabhupada says, when three-fourths of the population of the whole world become irreligious, the situation is converted into hell for the animals. Well, how about for the people also, right? Uh, but it starts with the animals, and that's what we're seeing today. Uh, 80 million cows murdered in America, 60 million pigs, 60 million sheep, and then, and then there's a, a, a grab bag of, of rabbits and uh, other things also, and then, then you have uh, horses also, uh, horse meat is not so popular in America, although it's there. In America, also, they have alligator meat. We did a festival at, uh, at the uh, Fremont Festival, and we had a food booth. Right next to our food booth was a, uh, a man that came from Florida, and he was selling alligator meat. And people were buying it. I mean, there's a big line, bigger line than we had, and they were buying the alligator meat. Can you imagine that? Alligator is such a disgusting animal and they actually eat it so uh, when three-fourths of the population of the whole world become irreligious the situation is converted into hell for the animals in the age of Kali godless civilizations will create so many so-called religious societies in which the personality of Godhead will be directly or indirectly defied yeah, one time I did a, I was invited to an interfaith conference in uh, Bothell. And uh, I was one of, supposed to be one of the speakers, you know, representing Hinduism. And so all these other speakers got up before me. The one I found the most interesting was the Wiccan. Wiccan are witches. They have a religion called Wiccanism in America. And the lady got up and she said, I'm a Wiccan. And we believe that uh, uh, you can worship any God you want, doesn't matter. And, and, but we believe in the powers that one can uh, develop by uh, performing ceremonies. And then she started talking about these ceremonies, you know, Wiccan ceremonies, you know, and these powers that the Wiccans, many of them are women or witches, develop. So, uh, after she was finished talking, then the universal, uh, what do you call that, Unitarian church people spoke, you know, and they, they also said the same thing she did, is that you can worship any God you want. You know, you can come to our church, we don't care which God you worship, you know, we, we accept everyone. <laughs> so, uh, this is what you're faced with nowadays in America. It's this complete breakdown of anything called bona fide religion. There's so many different religions. Everyone has a different twist to the so-called spiritual truth. Just like if you look at the titles of different churches, like you have the Methodist Full Bible Church. Then you have the the Methodist Half Bible Church. And then you have the Methodist Episcopalian Anglican Church. And then you have the uh, uh, Southern Baptist Church. And then you have the Northern Baptist Church. You know, each one is different. Each one has their own take on the Bible. You know, and, and it's confusing. And then you have the Jehovah's Witnesses, then you have the Mormons. Mormons have their own Bible. Jehovah's Witnesses have their own Bible, uh, different than the other Bibles. And they all have their own way of presenting, you know, Jesus or no Jesus, whatever, you know. Or, and then the Universalist Church, you can worship any God you want. You know, you can come here and worship Allah, or you can worship Jesus, or you can worship nobody. 
you're part of their church. So uh, this is the confusion that's in this country. And, and it's because of what you call freedom of religion. I knew this one lady, uh, she had a, uh, a uh, she had sold the building that was the uh, Berkeley Temple to the devotees, so we, we owed her, uh, you know, a uh, mortgage, and then and then the temple defaulted on the mortgage, and that's when they called me in to try and do something. And I had to deal with this lady. Who was, she had her own nonprofit. She started her own religion, right? And, uh, and she was a very clever lady, right? And everything was nonprofit. So she was making profit under the umbrella of a nonprofit, right? Very clever lady, right? And she was disgusting. She was very difficult to deal with. She was greedy as anything. We finally paid her off and got her off her back. But uh, uh, this is what's going on in the country, you know? And, and then many devotees also started their own nonprofits, right? It started way back in the 19... 70s when as soon as they started selling other things besides books then the, the downward spir spiral began it, it started with incense and then uh, along with the book and then it went to uh, records along with the book or to sell a book then they just stopped selling books and just did what's called the uh, book points so book points are you sell a record and it's equal to two book points, right? So then they were just uh, collecting money, selling records or incense, and then it started with, and then it began jewelry, and it just kept going like that until the Sankirtan movement was very, very, you know, uh, corrupted. So you see, the, this is Kali Yuga, like a little deviation. Uh, it's just like having a hole in a dam. There's a story of a, in Netherlands of a boy who put his finger in the hole in the dam. <laughs> so how long do you think you can stop the dam from leaking, right? By just putting your finger in it, in the hole. So as soon as there, there's a little hole somewhere, then the, it just keeps increasing and increasing until there's a deluge and, it, and you're completely overwhelmed. So Prabhupada says, in, this, in the age of Kali, godless civilizations would create so many so-called religious societies in which the personality of Godhead would be directly or indirectly defied. So there was a survey of how many devotees had started their own nonprofits. It's an unbelievable number in America alone. How about the rest of the world? You know? So uh, you could say, oh, well, you did it too. You, know, you have Northwest share. Uh, that's true. It's true in a sense, but uh, Northwest Share was not, it's not a personal pro uh, nonprofit, it's a genuine nonprofit in order to uh, get donations from companies uh, that will refuse to donate to a religious society. So we ran up against that problem uh, in uh, 1998, I decided let's, let's do a, a nonprofit that they will be willing to donate to uh, because there were too many that refused to donate to a religion categorically. You know. uh, but there are devotees who started, have started their own nonprofits to not pay taxes and just make a living. Right? So you can see things like that happen. It's a slippery slope. And Kali Yuga is like that. As soon as we deviate a little bit from the four regulative principles, and by the way, I want to read something today just so you have an idea of what Prabhupada's thinking. He wrote a letter to this lady named uh, Himavati Devi Dasi. And in that letter, he made some amazing points. Mm, one second, let me find it. Yeah, he says, uh, 
our society requires millions of dollars for propaganda work. But Krishna has made us financially poor. I think it is good to remain financially poor because always we'll be able to pray to Krishna asking for help to execute his service. You notice he doesn't say ex pray to Krishna for money. He says ex uh, pray to Krishna asking his help to execute our service. If all of a sudden we become very strong financially, Maya may dictate us or to us for sense enjoyment, and we may fall a prey to her tactics. Therefore, to remain poor is one of the qualifications for advancing in Krishna consciousness. Our predecessors, the Goswamis, they voluntarily gave up everything for advancement in Krishna consciousness. We do not require any money for our personal account. We shall always be happy with anything Krishna is happy to supply us for maintenance. But for the preaching purposes, we can accommodate to receive all the riches of the world. So let us try with sincerity, and Krishna will help us in the matter of our advancing the cause of Krishna consciousness. So what does this mean exactly? Because it sounds, if, if you just do a cursory reading, it sounds like double talk, but it's not. What he's saying is that, and this is what people, uh, some devotees have misunderstood. Uh, when he says it's better to be poor, what he means is you, just like uh, Sudama Vipra Brahmana, his wife forced him to go see Krishna in Dwarka because he was a classmate of Krishna and, they, and Krishna was very, attached to him and to ask him for money because he was poor. He was very poor. And his wife was fed up being poor. So he goes and all he can offer Krishna is a little bit of chip rice because that's all they could afford to give. And, he's in, and he doesn't want to give it to him because he's, he's embarrassed uh, because that's not a, you know, he doesn't consider that a real gift for the Lord. And he goes to Dwarka, which is an extreme opulence and as soon as he announces himself, and the guards tell him who it is, he immediate, Krishna immediately invites him, and he, immediately he and, and uh, Rukmini offer him uh, uh, arti and wash his feet and put sprinkle water on their heads because he is a genuine Brahmana. And then Krishna says, so now tell me why you came to see me. And he says, oh, nothing, nothing. What's that little thing you have there in your dhoti? You know, you, you know, like in India, when you have to carry something, you don't have pockets, right? So they, they make a little knot, you know, and, and put whatever it is they have to carry in that knot in their dhoti. So Krishna grabbed it. And he said, what is this? You know? <laughs> he says, nothing, give it back. He said, no, no, no. This is special prashadam. Now, it was not even cooked, right? It was just dry, chipped rice, you know. And Krishna started eating it, you know. He said, no, 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 you know. It's, he said, no, oh, let me have this. He said, this is the most delicious prasadam I've ever had. So, <laughs> so when that happened, uh, and, and uh, Sadama Vipa didn't ask him for anything, although his wife was forcing him to ask him for money, right? So then he passes, uh, I think, a month or something, and, and then he has to walk all the way back to his home, and when he gets back, he can't recognize his home. It, it, the whole village has been transformed, and there are palaces, opulent palaces. And then he sees some lady, you know, waving at him. He doesn't even recognize her. It's actually his wife. She's very nicely dressed, and his kids and everything. And it's just then he realizes, oh my God, you know, he got the the, the chip rice, and now he's done this, you know. So his wife is so happy to see him, and they're, they're living in opulence, but he didn't change his lifestyle. He continued exactly the way he was before, and just living very simply, and did not accept any of the opulence, although his wife was sat satisfied, and that was okay with him. So when he says, I think it is good to remain financially poor because always we shall be able to pray Krishna asking his help to execute his service. If all of a sudden we become very strong financially, maya may dictate to us for sense gratif 
sense enjoyment, and we may fall prey to her tactics. Therefore, to remain poor is one of the qualifications for advancing in Krishna consciousness. Then he gives the example of Goswamis. But then after that he says, uh, we do not require any money for our personal account. We shall always be happy with anything Krishna is happy to supply us for maintenance. But for the preaching purposes, we can accommodate to receive all the riches of the world. So there was this one Catholic nun, and uh, she purchased a lottery ticket in New Jersey. And she won. She won, I think, $30 million dollars. She gave every penny to the uh, nunnery, to the nuns' uh, uh, nonprofit, and she continued living like a nun. Right? Didn't change her life, uh, uh, her lifestyle. This is a true story that happened, I think, maybe 25, 30 years ago in the United States. So you see, that's what Prabhupada is talking about. He said. You, I mean, devotees can earn they, either through business or through sankirtan or whatever, you know, large amounts of money, but their lifestyle should stay the same. Uh, uh, vairagya vidya. That is, renunciation through knowledge and live a very simple life themselves, eat simply, dress simply, and so forth. But uh, lavish all kinds of opulence on the deities and the temple and so forth. And this was a lifestyle in India because if you go to places like Madurai, Shirangam, and uh, Rameshwaram, and, and Tirupati, you'll see the temple is extremely opulent. But everyone living around the temple, the brahmanas, the vices, the uh, chachas and the sudras, they're living very simple lives very simple lives, and their center of attraction is the temple. They're there every day, and they do their services, and in that, in that way, they're very happy, healthy, and their families stay together, and so forth. Okay, so there's just a few points I wanted to make. Thank you very much. This is a long purpose, so we'll talk about this purport for the next two, three days. Any questions? I just wondering, the cow is a very special uh, living being, animal, yeah. although in the, in the animal body, and uh, very dear to Krishna, obviously, and the personality of religion. So, what is the, if you, if you think in terms of a karma or living entity, why the, the cow on, in this world is more mistreated? Uh, exploited than even low animals like dogs or cats. Uh, they kill so much. Is that something to do with the karma or what? And yet, she's a pure um, creature. So I'm wondering, what, what's going on? Well, what's going on is the, the demons have taken over. <laughs> That's what's going on. And the kind of Krishna protect such a, 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 a precious animal which is very dear that's very dear to him. He protects the devotees. Well, let me read something Prabhupada says. It's, this is uh, something he wrote in 19... Uh, that's something he wrote a long time ago. Uh, well, 1975. So he says, The mass problem at the present moment in India is actually a food problem. I have therefore decided to start some village organization program. Namely, sh people should be invited to live in the village, produce their own foodstuff, grains, fruits, and vegetables, maintain a sufficient number of cows to get a large quantity of milk, produce their own cloth, eat sumptuously for keeping fit in health, and then they can regularly sit down and chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I shall arrange for the irrigation of the land, and the people there should give their labor for their own food and clothing, then chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and cultivate Krishna consciousness. Besides that, our men should go from village to village with Sankirtana party, 
hold festival, namely distribution of Bhagavad Prasadam, and induce them to chant and join with us in vibrating the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. In India, there are not less than 95% villagers, and Mahatma Gandhi wanted this village organization. I think this is a solid program. The people must eat sumptuously, not voraciously, and make them fit for working and chanting. In this way, they'll be purified, and everything will be nicely organized. So what did the demons do? They invited people. Well, first of all, they built the train system in India. The train system in India is the most elaborate train system in the world. The whole world, right? Most elaborate. Huh? Most Elaborate, yeah. This, the and with thousands sounds. and thousands and thousands of miles of train, more than almost oh, yeah. any other country, you know, reaching all kinds of remote places. And, and then they started building these factories. And then people heard about, you know, how much money they could make in the factory. So they moved from their traditional villages where their ancestors had lived for thousands of years into these big cities and uh, they work in factories, they live in the little houses, they eat junk food, and uh, they have bad habits, they drink coffee, they drink tea, they drink liquor, they smoke, and all this stuff, and completely have ruined uh, you know, their, uh, their whole natural lifestyle, and then they eat meat. So you see, this industrialization was the thing. And, and then cheap transportation going from any remote place right into a major city. This, and buses and trains and all that stuff. This is what has ruined India. And the same thing happened in the United States. People don't want to work on farms anymore. They don't want to live that simple life. And even on the farms, now they, they've corrupted the whole thing with tractors and machinery. And it's all expensive stuff. And you go into debt, and you have to work, and you have to try and eliminate uh, other workers. So it's this industrialization that has ruined people. Okay. So along with that, you have the bars, you have the nightclubs, you have uh, you know gambling, everything. Because the more money sudras get, the more they start spending it on low-class uh, behavior. Normally, sudras never had, hardly had any money. They were taken care of, and they worked. And so, this, this industrialization so, was this. Well, I was, yeah. I was referring to a specific uh, statement by Prabhupada, like uh, some of the lectures, Prabhupada is pleading, really, like, if you want to eat an animal, eat other animal, but no cow, don't kill cow. 